Recently, I encountered something I never had before. See, it was like the whisper of a promise broken. A desert of hope lay barren before me. I encountered the opposite of the three Hebrew boys facing the fiery furnace. Flames licking at my feet, consuming me. I encountered a flameless altar. Because after days of continuous supplication, I falter in the presence of onlookers. My altar runs with tears of his rejection. I encountered unmoving pillars still standing. My arms straining against the weight of my disobedience. The Samson in me is crying out, Do it again in me, Lord! But still, no strength is found in me. Recently, I encountered an unanswered prayer. At that moment, I started to consider that maybe my prayers weren't fervent or effectual enough. No raised hands, no bellowed cries, not enough tears, knees bowed, yes, but not enough pain. As I reconsidered my relationship with the author of my faith fades like the breath of air escaping my lungs while I cry out in despair. Father, are you even there? I question your sovereignty because that's the only way I can deal with the fear that I encountered while encountering an unanswered prayer. I started to reconsider our relationship. And like a disgruntled lover, I began to look back at the times when I needed you and you weren't there. I started to look back at the lost lives of innocent children who in their last moments must have encountered an unanswered prayer. I think of a mother losing her child and think of how she must have felt when she encountered an unanswered prayer. I think of those who stare silently into nothingness as hunger and poverty screams from within and I wonder that they too must have encountered unanswered prayers. I recoil from you because suddenly you're not the God that I met. I'm transformed into doubting Thomas, forgetting the promises and the finality of your word. My situation is all that I can see and because of that you've become invisible to me. I stumbled into the darkness of unbelief. Grasping desperately at feel-good sermons, trying to ignite an ember of dying hope, finding only the sharp edges of false prophets, a fickle altar, and failed ministries. I failed to consider that even before the beginning of time, you knew me. I failed to understand that even when you were upon that cross at Calvary, your eyes were fixed on me. Your love, eclipsing time, came to rest within me. Every heartbeat resounds with the sound of every near miss I was too caught up in myself to witness. Every breath expelling my lungs, a reminder of this earthen vessel that you have preserved for your purpose. I realized that in my foolish attempt to question you, I missed the mark and my perception got skewed. Because in truth, it is in this darkness that I encounter you. But like Adam in the garden, I'm hiding. I've tasted the fruit of doubt and the nakedness of my fickle faith is laid before you. But long ago, you planted a seed in me. The one from which comes the mustard seed. It grew slowly and quietly as time passed. And in that darkness, I felt the roots anchor within me. Each tendril, like a verse from Matthew 5, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. From the branches come the rustling sounds of Isaiah shouting, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount upon with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Deep within the soil that is my heart, I hear you whisper. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that I who believe in him shall not perish, so that I who believe in him will not lose hope, so that my faulting, faithless heart will no longer see the contempt of the heathen, so that my fainting heart will be made even, so that my eyes will see his sovereignty, so that with wisdom and love and continuity, I will pray until the answer comes, even if the answer will come in the silence and in the stillness of an unanswered prayer.